Cornering involves a sequence of decisions that you can make routine. Always break before the corner, then follow your path or line at a reasonable speed. If it's a sharp turn, stop pedaling. A shallow turn can often be pedaled through. Riders talk about taking a good or bad line through a corner. A good one gets you through safe and fast. Enter from the outside and exit wide. Guide the bike with your body. Even in most turns, the handlebars don't move much. The more you lean, the more you'll turn. Adjust your line for banking and road hazards as needed. Especially beneficial for triathletes, cutting corners tight cuts the distance and time you travel. Don't try this against oncoming traffic, but on a closed course, you can save meters on every turn. Saving two or three seconds on each of 20 or 30 turns can easily be the margin of victory. You don't want to blast through every corner, but there's no reason not to learn how. This is an exercise one of my earlier coaches had me do to teach fast and safe cornering in a controlled situation. Find a parking lot or some deserted streets, which will enable you to make a series of four right-handed turns. Clear visibility is a must. As you cut the corner faster and tighter, you'll begin to feel the physics of the situation. If you ride smoothly, you'll find that the threshold of losing it isn't nearly as close as you thought. You'll sense the little adjustments you need to make. When you feel you're losing it, you gotta dig in. Press harder with your outside leg and really commit yourself to the maneuver. Don't panic. Bailing out halfway through the turn is usually the worst mistake. When you're blasting through a corner and you think you're gonna lose it, the biggest thing is you gotta hang on and believe in yourself because as soon as you give up, you're gonna fall down. Try Ron's exercise twice a month to improve your cornering technique. Find some deserted streets with clear visibility, such as a new housing development or an industrial park on a weekend, where you can make a series of unobstructed turns. When riding in a field of riders, your line and even your cornering form will be dictated by riders around you. Only the riders at the front get to ride the good line. That's why small breakaways can often outrun a pack. They can take the ideal line and pick up those valuable seconds. Riding in the draft or slipstream of another rider is an essential skill for any bike rider. At moderate speeds, wind resistance is about 75% of your energy drain. At race speeds, it's about 90%. Because drafting can cut wind resistance by as much as a third, it is one of the most crucial tactical devices in cycling. These riders are drafting in a sophisticated way. They share the effort by taking turns or pulls at the front. By cooperating closely, they become more efficient. This formation is a pace line. A single rider works anywhere from 20 to 35% harder. Reduced wind resistance lets weaker riders stay with stronger ones, enabling families and spouses to exercise together. Among more equal riders, working together makes a ride more interesting by adding a mental challenge. You move faster and further without extra effort. The first step in drafting is to sense the wind direction. Watch for its effect on leaves, grass, and things blowing across the road. Wind from the front or back puts you in a straight pace line. Crosswinds put you in an echelon. Go into whatever formation makes sense. Listen to the wind. The sound will change when you've hit the sweet spot.
Some of the general rules for drafting are, one, don't apply the brakes suddenly. This could knock down the riders who are following. Two, when you leave the group, don't accelerate too quickly. If you split the group in two pieces, the work cannot be shared. Three, don't lead too long. If you drop behind and get rest when you need it, you will be able to lead faster each time and keep going farther. Four, communicate with those around you. And most importantly, number five, stay alert. Don't lead your group through a chuck hole. And when you follow, look ahead so you can see potential accidents before they happen. When you're drafting in an echelon, one of the most important aspects is to subdue your ego. When a group of riders works as a unit, their energy can be more than the sum of its parts. That's what you're looking for. Everyone being in the same or compatible gears promotes good rhythm and cooperation. Good drafting is critical to anyone who wants to race. Sharing the load has to be worked out quickly, and refusing to pull your weight does not make you popular. Drafting smoothly, or purposely refusing to do so, is the most dynamic feature of breakaway groups. If there's anything in the road, it's up to the leader to alert the others. Drop the arm that's on the same side as the pothole or other problem, and make sure that the other riders you're with do the same. Amateurs in a pace line are usually 8 to 12 inches apart. The pros, only a few inches. Bumping the rear wheel of the rider in front of you is very dangerous. The rider behind usually crashes unless he has exceptional skill. The actual crash is caused by leaning over the wheel. If you cannot avoid striking the wheel, you must try to bounce away. Mastering this technique can literally save your skin, but don't try it at high speed. The tighter the echelon, the more efficient. If you don't act quickly, you'll be left to fight the wind all alone. It's not unusual to find yourself working closely with your worst opponent to chase down a mutual enemy. Road racing is made up of attacks, periods of neutrality, and working alliances. If you get a feel for this, you can win races. And that makes all your hard work worthwhile. That's the very first big one. I'm real happy. I mean, I was trying to be aggressive and, you know, and work for my team, 7-Eleven. And, uh, you know, I just ended up in the winning break. It was great. It is Scott McKinley, the first-year senior. Be a champion Coaches and riders are always talking about position, how the rider fits 